Well, welcome everybody to our very first Interdimension TV community conversation. My name is Lauren Ekstrom. I am the co-founder and co-CEO of Interdimension TV. And this year we are launching these monthly chats and it's gonna look a little bit different each month. Sometimes we'll be coming on and interviewing one of our incredible Interdimension TV teachers. Sometimes myself or Travis will be hosting a wisdom talk and a seated meditation practice. And other times we're gonna be interviewing people from the community, um, people who've benefited from using Interdimension TV. And we're so excited to be sharing these conversations with you, so welcome. It also feels especially important that here in the US, we're having this first conversation on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So in honor of community, what a really special way to honor community and all come together in this way. So today I'm joined by Dr. Christine Turrentine. Christine is one of our incredible Interdimension TV teachers. She is a doctor of physical therapy, a health and mindset coach, as well as an advanced, certified, experienced, holistic yoga flow teacher. So she's one of the few who have done our 300 hour training all the way through in person. You might also be familiar with Christine if you're part of Interdimension Academy as she is our resident anatomy teacher. And later on this year, we're going to have uh, her coming in and recording. I don't think it'll come out this year. It'll come out early next year, but an anatomy focused part of our 300 hour teacher training. So really so much to look forward to. And this week we are excited to release Christine's new series called A Healthy Spine for Life. So with that in mind, we wanted to sit down with Christine and really talk about not just the series, but her experience, all of her different experiences that have brought her to yoga and the perspective that she gets to come in teaching her classes with. So Christine, welcome. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thank you for the warm introduction and hello to everybody across the world today. My name is Christine Turrentine. As Lauren mentioned, I'm just happy to be joining you guys today. So Christine, I just would love for you because, you know, I know this is true for myself. When I join a particular platform, there's often one or two teachers that I end up practicing the most with. Like there's a reason why I joined that particular platform. And when I discover a new teacher on that platform, I'm so excited because it gives my week that much more flavor and variety, new insights, new perspectives. And so this might be the first time that some inner dimension people are getting a chance to meet you. Some people may have never even done your classes. So I would love for them to get to hear your story and you know, what brought you to yoga? Because it's such an interesting path that you've been on as a doctor of physical therapy and then the integration of yoga and all of these other holistic practices that you've brought into your wheelhouse. Yeah, it's funny because even when I think, I've been a physical therapist for 16 years now. I graduated from um, University of Ottawa in Canada um, 16 years ago in 2006. And I remember, I remember starting to practice yoga, in, especially in my first year of college. And I remember thinking at that point, I really want to do a yoga teacher training. And I kept waiting and waiting. And I remember think, having at one point thoughts like, I'm just going to do that when I retire, like in a few decades from now, I just kept putting it off. And I, I put it off for a while until I, I felt like I found the right training actually with, with Travis and yourself. And so, um, yeah, it wasn't until I guess it's well, 2000, when did we do our yoga teacher training? Gosh, 2018 is when I did my 200 hours. So, so yeah, I had been working as a physical therapist for over a decade by the time that I um, embarked in my yoga teacher training, but it's always something that was on my radar. Um, yeah, and I've worked as a physical therapist in, um, in Canada and Ottawa. My first part of my, um, first after I graduated from the University of Ottawa, and then I worked in Washington state and then in California, I've been here for about 12 years. So I, I've worked, um, especially in orthopedics. So with a lot of neck, back, knee, shoulder, um, injuries for the last 16 years. And so, uh, have really garnered a lot of experience, but I've always looked at the body through um, the lens of energetics and the lens of um, our emotional and our spiritual health as well too. Like that's always been 
a part of how I look at the body and how I look at injuries. I just feel that when I really fully embarked on uh, my role as a yoga teacher, I found a lot more language and word to be able to really lean into that, describe it, to be able to better communicate how to dive into that as part of a healing journey for someone to embark on. Um, I think many times when we have an injury or, or something in our body, it is that physical pain or something that we might end up actually taking action on first. But I think that there's echoes before that within our body, if we're able to really listen to those energetically, perhaps before we really um, have a physical issue happen. So yeah, so that's a little bit about my background as far as that journey um, from physical therapist graduating from the University of Ottawa in 2006. And then I uh, earned my doctor of physical therapy degree in um, 2015 from Evidence in Motion. Um, I also in that time um, owned my own uh, physical therapy practice from 2013 to 2021 Motion Matters Physical Therapy in the Central Valley of California. And so um, yeah, I've had a, a diverse career continuing as a physical therapist, um, as a yoga teacher, and then as well recently graduating as a, a health coach as well too. Well, and I get the pleasure. So for people who are interdimension members, I get the pleasure of working really one-on-one -on -one with the teachers as they conceptualize their content, whether that's single classes, series, or programs, and really talking through the process with the teachers so that they're inspired mm -hmm. to, to come and teach what what's alive for them in their lives. And that's something that we've really held so true, both myself and Travis as kind of the lead teachers on interdimension and as the founders is that we want all of the teachers at interdimension coming in and teaching things that are really alive for you so it's not us telling you guys what to teach um, we never want your voices edited and one of the things that i found so inspiring both as your series was coming together and then getting to be in the space as you filmed and created your series is this beautiful integration of yoga philosophy you know i think we can think of being a doctor of physical therapy in a very Western body context. And you're someone who from the go has embraced the idea of energetics. And so inside of your new series, A Healthy Spine for Life, what you've done is really interwoven in a very organic and and holistic way, a touch on the different energy centers through each class in the series. So I would love for you just to tell everybody who's tuning in, whether that's live or recorded, a little bit about your series that's coming out and a little bit about how you approach the series and the integration of these holistic elements. Yeah, so the Healthy Spine for Life series has five different classes. We have three power and two gentle classes. Um, they're 20 minutes each in length. And what I really, when I was sitting down to create the series, I knew that I wanted to address different levels of the spine. And so um, one of the, the first class is called Grounding into Power, where I really look at the low back, the lumbar spine. And when I think about that part of the body, I also think about the chakras that are in that body. And so the root, sacral, and solar, and how important it is to have that sense of stability, that sense of grounding. We oftentimes think about the low back and the importance of the core muscles, where I also think about the importance of the core muscles, but also that, um, that trust in yourself, that if you have a deep trust in yourself, it's easier to really be able to um, engage that part of the body really well. Um, so that's the first class grounding into power. The, the second class is spinal mobility. And that one's a gentle class. It, it focuses more on the thoracic spine, so that middle part of your spine that can oftentimes develop a little bit of stiffness. It's also where our stiffness as far as our um, thoracic spine, that middle part of our body that's connected to our ribs. Because it's connected to our ribs, it's a really stable area of the spine, but it's also an area that will end up having a little less rotation, a little less extension over time. And so that area is home, of course, to the Anahata, the heart chakra. And so I think about that front of the heart, how we give from the front of the heart, give from the front of the heart and receive from the back of the heart. And that importance of having that flexibility to really be able to um, integrate those items as well too. Um, the third class is vision and voice. And so that class really focuses on your neck, your head. And so 
um, really through the cervical spine. And again, stability being important in that area, but also home to those upper three chakras. So our throat chakra, third and crown. And it's really our, our area to be able to communicate to the world, to be able to, um, to manifest as well too. And so that's why that um, class is called a vision and voice. Then we have posterior chain fire, the fourth class in the series. And posterior chain fire um, is really just a way to think about that posterior chain of our body, our glutes, our hamstrings, um, the long ropey muscles at the side of our spine and, and how those are so important to the stability of our spine. And spinal harmony really just brings everything together in that fifth class. Um, and so we're really working on hip and shoulder mobility in that class. It's yeah. And so comprehensive. And I think that that's one of the things that's really important about a series like this, because it is targeted and specific, the reminder that within 20 minutes, there is so much that we can address and so much mm -hmm. that we can touch on. And so this could be the kind of series that maybe this is the only thing you do each day, or maybe you partner it with another practice. If you like to have a little bit of a longer practice, you know, that you can kind of stack these things. As you were talking, I was so curious, and I'm so sorry, I'm gonna put you on the spot here, but I'm so curious as a doctor of physical therapy, has there ever been a moment in your specific physical ther therapy practice where you had an aha moment with a client or a breakthrough and it what it was just this combination of like oh there's something else going on in your heart in your voice because you know you were talking about these places or in your lower back and that that awareness on the client's behalf kind of shifted the pain in their body was there has there ever been kind of like a crazy story of a of a breakthrough or an insight that's changed things for somebody I, or have they come back so, and like been like, oh my gosh, I realized this thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've definitely had instances where I think, especially with grief, I think I think about grief often, and um, how many people that I've seen that, you know, they're coming in for neck or upper back pain, and we're you know talking about uh, the ongoing issue that they've had, why, why they're here, and then they happen to mention that they're their brother, their wife, their spouse passed away a month ago or six months ago. And uh, that's just happened so many times that it just, to me, just has that connection to the heart. Also just posture wise, when we're sad, when we're grieving, we tend to have this turning in of our posture, just kind of really um, curling in our, on ourselves. And so I've had, and the thing is that folks don't often really link those things together. Um, so I definitely have had, times when people have come to me before just of you know how do i open up that that part of my body but really um in the moment of really having some moments with grief and having issues that way um, has really come to light and we see this a lot whether it's in the private facebook group or in the comments on the website um we've all had those moments in a in a practice that caught us by surprise where mm -hmm. we either had emotions arise sometimes that manifests at uh, anger at travis <laughs> for <laughs> the 700th yogi push-up um sometimes that that manifests as tears or grief um you know those things come up and they can they can surprise us and i know you and i are almost always reading the same books at the same time we kind of go back and forth and and that so much of this is alive in the collective dialogue right now especially in the work of gabor mate and bessel mm -hmm. vander vander kolk which i'm sure so many people are aware of the body keeps the score and and the body keeps the score there it is mm -hmm. <laughs> you have it right there so um if anybody is looking for a book to read i think christine and i would both highly recommend the body keeps the score and and just this reminder that you know the body is this historical library and we can so often forget or or, or not be aware of that in the moment um i'm really curious christine like in the creation of this series what are some of your hopes you know what do you hope people gain or the insights that they garner from going going through this series what are some of your hopes for people as they as they experience it i think it, it goes back to really just making that connection between those different parts of our body and the energetic shifts that can happen and really connecting um, different emotions to 
um, with, to those body parts as well too, and really being able to start to do that work of, of perhaps releasing some of that, or just even looking at it just a little bit more deeply. Um, I think that that would be just really a, a, a big thing to really take away is just making those links and those connections. And then knowing that it's not only, um, it's not only individually that you can dive into that work, that there are resources to be able to really turn towards as well too, that that could be as simple as turning to a journal and really being able to um, dialogue with yourself about um, this different healing and, and, and the journey that you want to be on or, or reaching out to other professionals as well too. And just really noticing if there, is there a loss of mobility in my body? Is there something that is coming up for me emotionally that I want to then maybe reach um, out for support on? So just being able to to recognize that within your body and then also giving yourself permission to find the support that you need. Beautiful. And within that, I guess I'm always curious from you guys, what, why did you feel inspired to create this? You know, what, what was it about this particular topic or this particular area of the body that felt like something, gosh, you know, I really have got to, got to create this for, for the community at this time. Um, I, when I looked at this series, it was, it was funny because I, I remember having, when I was just, I really start a series just by journaling and, and figuring out what do I want to create. And so, um, I had been one, I've been looking a lot at, um, energy work, um, chakras, um, as well as different anatomical landmarks and just really integrating that. And this was actually one of the first times when I was really able to put all those pieces together because so much of my work as a physical therapist, um, people only expect me to ever really talk about their physical body. So it's kind of you know, the question you asked about that, those insights, they happen inside myself, but I don't always verbalize them because within the medical environment, it's not something that someone's always is not ready for really to look at that piece of it. And so for me, this creating this series was really able, being able to put all those pieces together and to be able to start, um, start the process of verbalizing that as well too, which I feel like I'm just still at the beginnings of, of really putting all those pieces together as well too. Um, yeah, so, so that's really, you know, part of the creation of the series was just really placing all those pieces together. Um, when I was creating, especially the, the final class, this final harmony class, um, I've, I know that you listen to Andrew Huberman all the time and I do as well. And so there's so many, uh, light bulb things that, that he's really, um, able to instruct and really speak into the science of so much. And so one of those things that he always speaks of, listen to anything by Andrew Huberman, you know, that he really professes the importance of um, daily, just getting light and to be, you know, to try to do that before 10 in the morning to really reset your circadian rhythm. And so, um, that's one of the things that I touch on in the spinal harmony class, just that importance of just getting out getting some sunlight, whether there's, um, cloud cover or not, um, just being able to get out there to just reset that circadian rhythm. And, um, I think also of, uh, just the cycles of nature that so often when we're looking at healing in our body, what ends up happening is that we want the result right now. And I, I know I have folks come in all the time who, um, you know, have a, a, an injury or, or an illness that they're dealing with that we're all very impatient with our bodies, I think. And so we want, you know, something to have happened yesterday, perhaps, um, when it comes to healing, but that our bodies are a part of nature. And really, what we what we sometimes need to lean into is that healing also happens in the cycles of nature. And so I, I touch into that, um, especially in that spinal harmony class of really thinking of the cycle of the seasons and, and how that applies to our body. Um, I've forgotten what the question was now, but, <laughs> but no, yeah. I love that. I love that. He, it's such an important reminder for all of us. And this is a conversation I've had with so many um, students and friends and even family members 
is that we can really conflate this idea um, of healing and curing. And sometimes we're building a relationship with where we are in our lives, um, wh whether that's our age or certain things that, are, that happen for us in terms of disease or longevity, um, and just building that relationship that it doesn't have to go away in order for us to feel healed around it. And then sometimes that becomes our practice. You know, I, I will mm -hmm. say for myself that, uh, being pregnant, having a baby, going through a pandemic, my body is fundamentally different. My flexibility is is fundamentally different. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to put my foot behind my head again um, <laughs> in this lifetime. And I also don't know that I care. You know, I don't I don't right. know that I have that ambition. And so being with ourselves um, where we are in the in the cycle of our lives and, and back in connection with with nature and the cycle of the world is so important. And what um, Christine mentioned, just for anybody who isn't aware, what she referenced was Dr. Andrew Huberman. Dr. Andrew Huberman is a professor out of Stanford, and he has an incredible podcast. You can find the videos for free on YouTube or anywhere where you listen to your podcast. It's called the Huberman Lab Podcast. And he's just had some incredible mm -hmm. episodes. I'm still Still listening to his four hour interview with Sam Harris on mindfulness and meditation that is just um, absolutely mind blowing and incredible. Well, and earlier you were talking a little bit about you talked about two things that I want to go back to, because I think most of us can relate to this just in terms of life, which was that tension or the, the lack of mobility that starts to evolve in the thoracic. And I'm wondering, do you have any tips? So even while we're here watching and <laughs> tuning into each other over Zoom, um, is there anything from your perspective that that especially helps us to reintegrate with this place? Um, maybe just touching back into it and, and gaining some more mobility or flexibility back into that thoracic space. Yeah, so when I think of that thoracic space, I, I just think of that, you know, basic, we're all yoga practitioners here. So cat cows and just really being able to really lean into the extension part of um, cat cow. So really into that, you know, shoulder blades back and, and open. And just the importance of where your shoulders are with that as well, too, because so often we'll think about moving the spine, but, you know, it's also being able to have that opening through the pectorals and really to be able to, to open. And so um, that's really what I, I, I think of is really just that cat cow and just knowing that you can do that in a sitting position, in a standing position, that you really can move into that flexibility. Um, I also really recommend having a back support. I mean, I'm sitting in this chair, but I have this lovely little lumbar back support and that, you know, that's placed at the lower part of my spine, but that, that upper part of our spine, it's not in isolation, that it's connected to the areas above and below. And so really noticing that lower part of the spine, if you have good alignment there, that that's actually going to help you to be able to attain that just kind of open position through the thoracic spine that you need that um, that stability coming from the bottom up to really be able to sit in that perhaps neutral spine position so it really touches <laughs> on this reminder i think that so many of us, we get caught in this space of thinking. We have we have something going on in our bodies, a place of tension. Um, we might have an intuition what mm. that's occurring from, something going on in our lives, a situation, a relationship, a particular emotional conflict that's coming up. And then we think somebody else is going to have a better answer than we have. You know, it's like, she's a doctor of physical <laughs> mm -hmm. therapy. She's going to know the move that's going to open up this place in my body, or she's the one that's going to know how to heal that pain in my hamstring or my hip. Um, Christine and I had a funny email exchange about a year after my daughter was born. I was having a pain in my hip. I sent Christine the email. She wrote me an incredible response. But the second I sent the email, the pain went away. And it was <laughs> fascinating, right? I didn't need Christine to come and give me some, I'm so grateful for the information she gave me, but I didn't need some expert outside of me to come up with the answer. And so what you were saying in terms of going back to cat and cow, right, is that simple is enough. You know, we so mm -hmm. discount simplicity and, you know, with these practices, it's like, oh, how creative can the sequencing get? Or I want the next thing or the package with the shiny bow on it. And like really just 
the basics are the things that are going to heal us and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And if we can maintain the basics, this is going to mm -hmm. give us a health span um, and a lifespan that we can feel good in no matter what age we are, no matter what occurs for us. So I really appreciate that reminder of this, of the importance of the simple. Yeah, and I think that that really ties back into that um, just that theme of really trusting yourself, right, and and building that trust with your own body, which I think is one of the the main themes of this series is really honing in that internal voice because so often we can go many months, years without really listening to our body and just ignoring it as well too. And so if we're able to really have that self inquiry, we can find a lot of those answers as well too, which is where I come in, of course, to be able to, to guide that process and to um, be able to, you know, figure out what, how to really listen to, um, to your body and to figure out what it needs. But yes, yeah, something as simple as just making sure that you're moving your spine and now deflection and extension um, can just be really important as a a basic thing. And I know you you mentioned this a couple of times and I know that it's alive for you in your life, but about journaling. And mm -hmm. I'm just curious if you if the idea of journaling feels hard for some people who are listening. I, I know one of the things that I struggle with with just sort of like free form journaling and I'll stop for long periods of time is this question of like who is this for? You know, like who is, you know, I, I know on some level I'm writing for myself and and at certain times to process things that are going up. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm just curious, you know, any advice that you have, especially as as a mindset coach, and then connecting this to our, you know, the, really the central channel, um, in terms of how people might approach the integration of journaling. Yeah, I, I think one thing that I've really leaned into especially this last six months a year is whatever amount of journaling that i'm doing is okay it could be and then not judging myself for it because i feel like oftentimes uh we get into the mindset of okay i'm going to do this every single day and then when we don't do it every single day we're disappointed and then we just kind of give up altogether. <laughs> and so just letting your frequency be its frequency and and that being that being enough i think is is a good first step when it comes to journaling and then also having just a few questions to turn to so one of the questions i've um, enjoyed asking myself is you know what would my future self do because of course we're, we're living in the present moment we have our, our past self our future self but if we're kind of hoping to tap into a little bit of internal wisdom just that question of what would my future self do just think even of um, different uh, as we're setting goals for the new year, as I'm looking at the year ahead, there's you know certain things that are coming up for us, like we're planning a move this year. And so big changes can sometimes feel overwhelming, but you can tap into that, um, that internal wisdom just by asking yourself, what would my future self do? So that, that's one question that I've really um, liked in my journaling practice, as well as asking why multiple times. So let's say you have a question you're gonna pose yourself or something that you are um, just looking into for, for yourself, like why am I making this decision and putting down that reason of why you're making that decision and then asking why at least three or four times because then you're really gonna get deeper into uh, perhaps your base values on that or just really gain a deeper insight just by asking a simple why but more than once. <laughs> yeah, and that's such a, it's, it's such a key piece of it, right? Is that we ask the first time and we get the like really basic surface mm -hmm. answer. And as we keep asking the question again and again, we get to go a little bit deeper and it's a double-edged sword because I'm, I'm finding in myself right now as I imagine myself doing it, both on the one hand, keep writing in my mind I, mm -hmm. I imagine myself saying like keep writing keep writing and at the same time can i keep writing without rushing um mm -hmm. you know like can i can i get past that surface answer and slow down enough maybe to hear the piece that's asking to be voiced but feels vulnerable you know that that's it's such an interesting balance in that process 
And I'm curious, you know, for, from your perspective, once people complete this series, do you have a suggestion for what they should do after? Because that's often a big thing that comes up is that people finish a program or they finish a series and they're curious about like now, now what? Do you have some suggestions for that? Yeah, just because each of the five classes focuses on a different body part. If there is one or multiple classes that really resonated with what you feel like you need, and that would be it felt, you know, a certain way good during the class. And then afterwards as well, too, you just felt like, gosh, my body feels settled or just feels really good right now. I think repeating that class and just make, maybe making it uh, a once a week class with and just slotting that in with the other classes that you're doing, um, I think would be a great starting point. And then just like you mentioned before, stacking as well too. So you could uh, make one of these um, spinal classes either beginning or after uh, another practice on IDM to really be able to make like a longer practice if you so choose. So really repeating um, the class that resonates with you and maybe part of your body that you feel like is needing some more mobility or strength. And right away, what I felt was this act of self care as you were making that suggestion, you know, for us being like you were saying, trust our own guidance, trust our own wisdom, and really being our own prescribers through the way that we use the content. You know, if we're aware that there's something going on in a certain place in the body, can we utilize the vast amount of content and sequence the classes for ourselves in a way that we have access to, to help create nurturing and openness or healing in that place in the body. So thank you for that, mm -hmm. that reminder. And I'm really excited because kind of we'll, we'll get into some questions here in just a second. But um, you know, right before we do that, we've got something coming up with Christine later this year that I'm really looking forward to because I think so many of you are looking forward to it, which is that she was going to be creating a series that targets specific parts of the body. And this is something that has been coming up a lot, I think, for people um, in terms of like, can I have a sequence that is just for my shoulders? You know, can I have a sequence that is just for my hips? Um, so that's something that Christine is, is in development on. And is there anything you want to say about that? I mean, I don't want to preempt you as you're in the development stages of it. Yeah, I haven't done that, that like, you know, journaling process and just kind of really diving into any of that, but just, you know, 10,000 foot view, just really, uh, you know, I think they're going to be 20 minutes in length. We'll probably end up filming about seven of those. So really just targeting seven different body parts, like the shoulders, wrists, knees, ankles, and um, part of it focused on mobility, but you know, yoga often is focused on mobility, but strength is so important to really be able to integrate both of those things because our body sometimes is not mobile because we haven't worked on stabilizing aspects to really allow our body to be as mobile as we can because part of our mobility is also going to be related to our nervous system and how safe it feels in a sense to impart more mobility. So yeah, just kind of really um, balancing those, those things with each body part that we dive into. Beautiful. Well, and before we end the call, we're going to talk about two really special things. So I want people to hang in there for that. Um, but now that we're kind of here, is there anybody and Christy, Christy is on with us today. So um, for those of you who haven't met Christy or don't know Christy, Christy is really the head of our community side of things here at Inner Dimension, and she's helping us with these calls. So I don't know if there have been any questions in the chat. I've been trying to focus just on talking with Christine directly. <laughs> um, but if there are any questions in the chat that um, have come up a couple of times, or if there's anybody who wants to come on and feels comfortable coming on and, and asking a question that they might mm -hmm. have. You know what? It looks like Andrea has a question. So I'm going to unmute her Okay, um, for one moment. Okay. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Can you yeah. hear me? Yes, I can hear okay. you. <laughs> well, I, I have to just take a second to say mm -hmm. thank you, Lauren, and thank you to Travis. I, you guys, saved me for COVID. Uh, it was the. It was really my silver lining. The best thing that happened to me from COVID was discovering you. I would not have mm -hmm. because I had uh, local yoga classes that I went to that I loved. But I have to admit I have never been back since I, <laughs> since I fell in love with you guys so um so thank you for that I have my husband sitting next to me um and he's the one with scoliosis 
pretty big time scoliosis. So I am, so my question, my question was with him in mind and I'll ask it, but then it's up to him to say anything after that. But um, yeah, he has uh, mid thirties um, scoliosis and, um, and multiple curves. And I haven't really encouraged him to take part in my yoga life um, be, for that reason. Do you have mm -hmm. any comments or thoughts, particularly with your new series in mind, Christine, for him? And now I, I'm out. <laughs> you can talk to him. <laughs> Um, I just also want to echo um, just practicing on IDM. I practice on IDM as well, too. And so I, I love practicing with Travis and Lauren as well. I did my uh, yoga teacher training with them, and I continue practicing them with, the, with them on the platform. So, um, yeah, as far as scoliosis is concerned, I mean, so for everyone's knowledge, it's, um, it's a, a rotation of the spine. Um, and so you'll end up having multiple curves. And there's a few different types of scoliosis. Uh, some are more flexible than others. It, it sounds like we're talking one of one that's pretty static and, and non-flexible. And so one big thing is just to really make sure that you're just moving into movement that's non-painful, obviously. Um, and really what ends up happening with scoliosis is that because there is that stiffness in the spine, you'll also end up developing stiffness through the shoulders and through the hips as well. And so really making sure that you're improving that mobility through the spine, but also just really looking at the shoulders and the hips and getting some more mobility and stability through those body areas as well can really impart a little bit more um, mobility just overall. Cause we might just focus on, okay, the scoliosis is just in the spine. And so we want to improve the flexibility there, but we really want to look at the body as a whole and make sure that those major joints are also, um, having an improvement in mobility because we may not be able to improve the mobility of the spine a whole lot sometimes with scoliosis. So and again, with your series, would you recommend that he try the more um, gentle ones or, or, or not? Yeah, I would start if it, I would start with some of the, the gentle classes or the spinal harmony, which does um, look at the shoulders and the hips. And then the um, spinal mobility class, which really focuses on the thoracic spine. So looking at those ones and really focusing on those gentle practices, because the power practices do have a little more like end range mobility, meaning that like you're going to the end movement in the spine versus the gentle ones are, are going to be just a little more in, in mid range movements. And um, so I think looking at those ones will will be a good starting point to try it and then just staying away from any pain. And if you're, um, if he has done any uh, movement practices, that's also probably just a good starting point. Like how familiar is he with his own body and, and moving it? Sometimes if a mobility practice is something really new to you, you may want to work with a physical therapist, with a personal trainer, with someone who can kind of give you that external feedback. It could be a mirror <laughs> in the room that kind of gives you a little bit of feedback, or it could be another person just instructing you on kind of some basic movements. Because again, you, you do want to have, especially when you're practicing online, you, you want to have a good sense of how your body is moving in space, which you may not have if, if mobility is something very, very new to you. So I hope that helps. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it again. You're welcome. And Travis, thank so much. you. Okay. Oh, thank you. Way to way to make me cry. I started a <laughs> your tears are coming. So thank you for that. It means the world. And and I realized just how emotional I was as this call started seeing so many of your faces. And um, it just feels really. So I can't tell you how special it feels to all be together in this way, even though we're not in the same room. Um, your faces and your presence is is really felt. So for anybody who is here live, you can raise your hand in Zoom and then Christy can unmute you if you have a question. Um, but if there's nobody who wants to raise their hand and ask a question who's here now, um, we can always go back into the chat and Christy can let us know if there are any questions that were in the chat that we should go back and review. I always say I'm a meditation <laughs> teacher, so I'm okay with silence. <laughs> you know, someone I did have one question in the chat. Um, so Christine, in regards to your new series coming out, 
for the power yoga classes, are those like all level type of classes, the power ones or more advanced? Um, if you could just go into detail about that, that'd be great. Yeah, all level for the power classes. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to be a, a middle path teacher from the standpoint that I, I do tend to give a lot of different options, even if some of the poses are um, a little more advanced, I'll usually either verbalize or instruct on um, variability within that posture. Because really any, mm -hmm. any class, if you are familiar or you can um, verbalize the um, modifications, it can be accessible. So yes, the power classes um, are more of a, a beginner um, class. Great. And then I'm seeing this question. I would like to stack classes. Should I start with 4545 and then Christine's class or the other way? Oh, that's an interesting question because um, they're very different. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yoga yoga 45 for 45 is got a very different pace uh, and, a, and a very different power kind of theme to a lot of it, even though you still have the gentle and the yin and the restorative. And um, yeah, so I, I would say, you know, they've got a very different feel to them and it depends on where you are. Again, I would go back to what Christine's suggestion was of really making your own diagnosis, being your own inner healer and teacher. And if what you're needing right now is something that is a little more introspective and is going to be a little bit of a slower, more mindful pace in that regard, in terms of methodically going through the body, then I would say start with Christine's new mm -hmm. series and then go into yoga 45 for 45 with the information that you garner from those classes, because then you're going to be able to integrate that information into yoga 45 for 45, which I think is, is really important. That's going to inform, do I do this pose or do I skip it? Do I <laughs> modify, you know, how am I going to enter into this because I have a deeper understanding of my body um, would just be would be my suggestion. But Christine, you might have something to say because you've done some of those 45 classes, I think. Yeah, I think that um, definitely doing the, the spinal series would impart a little bit more mobility, more familiarity with, with some different poses. I think if you wanted to stack them, probably doing one of the yoga for 45, 45 classes um, and then doing one of these spinal mobility classes afterwards would probably be a really nice balance because then your body would be really, really warm as well, too. And so it would kind of be a nice paired mobility practice. Great. Um, great. Thank you. Um, I actually see that Matthew raised his hand, so I am going to unmute him. Hi, I'm, I'm Matt. Um, thank you so much for this. I came on a little bit late and... Uh, um, I was brand new to yoga uh, about uh, two years ago. I've been in a 12-step program for seven years now. And at the, tw at the five-year mark, I just knew there was more to life. And my sister, uh, who is also subscribed, said, you should try Travis, uh, try the sleepy time. And I have been hooked ever since. You, <laughs> All of you people have changed my life and my life with my kids. And uh, it's just been so spiritual to be a part of all of this. And Christine, to see you uh, and to see this new series, I'm so excited about it because the only way I know you is through uh, the 108 program when Travis asked you, <laughs> how much longer do you want to hold a plank? And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, you were so motivated because I'm sitting there going, Christine, and I've heard it 10 times, right? But I'm like, Christine, no more. We don't want any more time. Um, <laughs> what, I, what I find myself in this place now is, is I, I had a really bad uh, uh, bout of COVID at the beginning of December. And I really hadn't missed getting on my mat. And I'm finding that step on that mat this last, you know, as January 1st came and I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of the 45, but it's different now. I, I don't seem to be able to hold my poses as long. I, I get fatigued longer for sure, very, very quickly. And I'm just asking, I, I don't know if anyone else is going through anything like that, but I just, I know I, I wanted to be on this call to just be a part of the spirit, a part of what we're do every day and uh, participate. But if, if you have any, uh, Thing to add to that that'd be great thank you so much for all you all do thank you matthew um thank you for sharing part of your journey as well too um so uh, yeah as far as I, I think you're kind of touching into even post covid fatigue and long covid 
And so just um, especially folks that there's been research to show that actually athletes or folks that are even more active um, are the ones who actually could suffer from a little bit more long COVID, meaning that there is more fatigue, delayed return to um, to early activity, potential brain fog, loss of energy, that sort of, those sorts of symptoms. I've had COVID myself twice this last year and um, have noticed, like I, I, I track my metrics, for example, I track my, um, with my aura ring, my um, heart rate variability and resting heart rate. And so um, I think knowing some of those metrics can be really helpful in figuring out when to start pushing a little bit. If you do have access to some of those metrics, either with um, a smart watch or an Apple device or a, or a device, something like uh, of those of that nature can be really helpful. And then the basic of listening to your body doesn't have to be as complicated as having a device that's telling you what your metrics are. But um, when you are noticing that you cannot hold a pose for as long, honoring that, right? Not wanting to rush yourself and step into perhaps the body that you felt that you had um, before COVID and, and giving yourself that opportunity to really um, reach into that healing and that um, just listening to that and, and really just taking your time with that recovery as well. Um, thank you, Christine. I think we have time for about one more question. And I see Alina raised her hand. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Sorry, it's dark because here in Italy it's almost midnight. <laughs> so everybody's <laughs> sleeping. So I'm just here on my couch. <laughs> I was waiting for it. So, um, uh, first of all, really thanks a lot because uh, uh, finding you on YouTube some years ago, it was uh, something really wonderful. And now, I can't wait almost every day to do the classes with uh, all the teachers uh, there. And uh, I'm even trying to do my teacher training. It takes longer because I work the whole day, but uh, I will reach the end sometime. I don't know when, but anyway, I will be there. So my question is this, uh, considering that Christine is preparing this the new program because this one she has already done, and she's preparing this new program for the end of the year for each part of the body. And uh, the small classes uh, to be stuck, I think it's difficult because when you start a class, there is you know, a, a wave. You start and then you build mm -hmm. up and then you go down. And to start classes for me, it's difficult because then at the end, maybe you are, I don't know, maybe very sweaty or very tired. And so would it be possible to prepare a class including a part of the body? So a class like the longer one, like the, the, the one of the newest the program of Lauren, the 75 minutes, maybe 75 minutes is very long, but to find a way to put this part of the body class in maybe, I don't know, 45, 60 minutes class. This would be perfect because 20 minutes, it's very short. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you go on the mat and you have just some time during the day and maybe you don't even have the, the time to organize it. So if it's already prepared, it's there. <laughs> that, that's it, my request. I don't know if Lauren, if you want to touch on that, the 20 minute versus 45 minute as far as um, what is asked and um, what seems to be the most popular um, item for IDM and what subscribers are asking for is, is kind of what I'm thinking when I think about the difference between 20 and 45 minute. Um, and maybe I'll yeah, so it's, on it's always it's always funny, right, being on this end of things for for interdimension TV, I'll just say that as, as the example, um, you know, we'll, we'll say to people, what are you wanting more of? And then everybody says 60 minutes. And then we put out a bunch of 60 minute classes and everybody's like, where are the 20 minute classes? <laughs> you know? So it's, um, it's a constant juggle for us. Um, we know that last year we did a lot of short form classes and we rectified that. So I want everybody who's watching to know 
that every teacher who's coming into film, um, you're going to get a variety and you're going to see that variety released throughout the month. And that's something that, that Christy helps with. Um, in terms of the schedule, but you're going to be seeing some now 90 minute classes. So for those of you who are Interdimension TV members and subscribers, you're going to get a free live 90 minute class just like this, but we're going to, you know, do it so that you can join live or you'll get the recording of it eventually up on Interdimension. Um, and you're going to get some 90 minute classes. You're going to have 60s, 45s, 20s, and 30s. And everybody who's coming in to record classes, all of the teachers that are on the platform now um, are all going to be creating that variety. But, you know, the reality is there are different people who are at different places in their life. And, and I know for myself, I'm still in early motherhood, I think, you know, my daughter just is not even three yet. She turns three in two weeks. And, um, you know, I, sometimes what I get, you know, is 30 minutes in the morning. And, and that's the time frame I, I have right now. And that's true for our, our membership. So, you know, for those of you who have the time and the capacity to be doing 60 and 75 minute classes, you're definitely going to get a whole experience from beginning to end. But the truth is, you're not going to get the same bliss and euphoria that, that, um, you, you would have in a 60 minute class versus a 20 minute class. Now, that being mm -hmm. said, when teachers are coming in and crafting 20 minute and 30 minute sequences, this is something from the foundation of, of our training that we've tried to impart and Christine being a part of that is that even if we only have 20 minutes, we're working to take you on a whole journey. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not skipping anything. You know, we're making sure that there is something that moves you, but at the end you are getting rest. And so I think even though these classes are only 20 minutes, you are going to get a full journey. So if you have the capacity to do a longer format class in the morning, I would say do that and then go to Christine's series as part of your self-care in the middle of your day. Um, you know, if you get a lunch break, mm -hmm. take 20 minutes to do Christine's class and then take your other 30 minutes and eat your lunch and get outside and get some of that sunlight and go on a walk. And keep in mind that all of those things are part of our practice. You know, all of those things are, are connected. The way that we eat our food, the walk that we go on outside that Christine was talking about, your practice isn't separate. You know, what you're doing on the mat isn't separate from the rest of your life. And I think you can take these 20 minute classes and kind of treat them as little as little bites in your day for, for people who have that kind of flexibility. So I hope that that, that helps answer that a little bit and give some, some guidance. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and so I, I would love to take more time to answer more questions, but I know that we're kind of getting toward the end. And, um, I do see this one question. Do you do the in per, um, classes that are open to the public? Yes. So the classes that we're going to be hosting once a month, you're going to see on our events page on interdimension TV, and you can come to those in person. They're limited mm -hmm. to about 30. 35 people, and we will be filming them for Interdimension TV. So if you're in Los Angeles on a day that we're filming one of those classes, please come see us. Um, please come practice with us in person. And um, Danielle, who owns the studio, I saw her face. She's actually on this call. Um, as you would recognize her from many of the videos. She's the studio owner. So you would come there and you would just see so many familiar faces. Um, but if you can't join in person, you will be able to join virtually um, through Zoom in this format, or we might do it through YouTube Live. So we'll see. But that'll be those classes will just be for Interdimension TV members. So before we wrap everything up, um, one of the things that feels really Really important is that Christine is someone who is available to you. So if people want to learn more, Christine, if they want to work with you, if they want to touch base, what is the best way for people to connect with you? Yeah, so uh, either through Instagram or my website are really the best places to connect. So on Instagram, my handle is Christine underscore turn time. And then my website is christineturrentine.com. And I'm a bit of a, in a transition this year as well, too, as I, I have worked as a physical therapist for 16 years, I, I touched on um, that I'm also a trained health coach and health coach certified through the Women's Integrative Health Institute. 
And so I'm actually going to be shifting gears towards really more holistic offerings this year and really stepping into the role of a health coach, which a health coach is, is a, a member of your healthcare team that can really help you to really instill um, habits. It's um, we all know what we need to do to, for good health most times, like we, we know those things we want to do, but really to be able to um, figure the time and how that actually looks like in your life is uh, what a health coach can help with. So, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Christine. And for everybody who is either joining live or watching the recording, this is something that Interdimension TV is doing for anybody everywhere. These community conversations are going to be happening once a month. And so what we've asked each of the teachers who are going to be participating in these conversations, which will ultimately you'll get to touch base and see a community chat with all of our teachers is to bring a charity forward because in giving this time freely, we also want to consider that an act of SAVA. So if you feel inspired to learn more about the organization that is close to Christine's heart, that organization is called um, Namaste for Compassion. And Christy's going to drop a link into the chat. So you can visit that organization. You can learn more about what they do. And then it's up to you if you want to make a small donation um, as part of your gratitude or as part of your SAVA for having taken part in this free conversation today. And it's been important to us to make sure that the ongoing karma yoga is also part of um, what we're bringing forward as we shift some of our inner dimension gives back in this way. Christine, is there anything you want to say to everybody about Namaste for Compassion? Yeah, Namaste for Compassion, it's a, a local charity within Central California. And so they actually send yoga teachers to into the community um, we teach at um, a couple juvenile prisons, um, some nonprofit workplaces, and as well, uh, the funds that we raise um, actually go to help um, street children in India. The founder, uh, Nayantara, um, grew up in India and goes back every year, um, and, and it's been on her heart to really be able to help the street children of India. So it's, it's wonderful because it's local, but then also international. So. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. And we're going to be doing our next community conversation with Denise Antoine, who is one of our incredible teachers. She has her very first series coming out called Girlfriends Glow Up. So we're excited to bring this series. It's all about friendship, what we've been touching on here, community, making sure that we are doing these practices um, with each other and, and getting that support both internally and externally. Uh, Denise and I are going to be having that conversation on February 22nd at 11 a.m. And we will, again, send out the invitation. You'll get the information for that. And we really look forward to sharing this next community conversation with all of you. To everybody who joined today, thank you. Thank you for your presence. It was so nourishing to see your smiles and your faces and your laughter and um, your nodding heads. It's just so great to be in community with you in this felt present way. And Christine, thank you for joining us. And thank you for your new series. I know my spine is so excited to get started. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next month.